Hey, what's up? Are you a listing agent or just got a listing and you're wondering how not to make it a trash listing? I'm about to go over some of the top things you can do to make your listing stand apart and be an awesome listing. You ready? Let's go. All the way up. Uh -huh. All the way up. Hey, what's up? It's Chris Martin, real estate agent, investor, coach. If you have not already, subscribe to this channel. If you're an agent or anyone that's looking to up their game in the real estate business, there's a lot of good information on here. Take a look at some other videos and definitely check them out. Good, good, good morning. Uh, good Monday morning, guys. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how not to have a trash listing. And, you know, I, I, I made that topic purposely because there's a lot of trash listings out there. You know, I look at people's listings sometimes and I'm like, you have to be kidding me. Like, how would you feel that that was okay posting that? How would you feel that that's okay? So I'm going to try to help you guys out. Um, if you guys have a listing coming up um, or, you know, going back and maybe looking at some of your listings and doing some editing, just to make sure that you are putting your listing out there in the best light possible. <laughs> because at the end of the day, your listing is a representation of you. That's your business card. When someone sees your listing, they're going to see who's the listing agent on this listing and your name's going to be attached to it. Your face is going to be attached to it. Your reputation is going to be attached to it. And by the way, this is also something that you can use on your future listing appointments. Here's what my listing looks like. Here's what my listings look like. Here's how I separate myself from agents that may not post listings that are quality. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff today. And uh, thanks for joining me, uh, Jessica. I see you watching. Um, Leo, what's happening? Anyone else that's online, feel free to drop your comments in the comment section. If you're watching this after it's being live, just drop your comments in and uh, I'll do my best at responding to you guys. All right. So your listing is your business card. You guys know that. We just talked about that. We're going to start with the description. So the description. Description is very important because we know that once we post our listing on MLS, our listing gets hijacked, right? Our listing gets hijacked from MLS and it gets put on all these other sites that we don't necessarily have control of all the time. So it's gonna be posted on the Zillow's, it truly is, and all these other sites that buyers have their eyes on. It's going to take that description that you have and it's going, it's going to couple it with your listing. So it's gonna be the description that kind of continues to be attached to your listing. Jerry, good morning. Kevin, good morning. So your description, please use at least three sentences. I see some listings sometimes that are like one line. And it's like, to me, that's a red flag. Like if I see a property that's one line, if I'm a buyer, I'm looking at, wow, I could probably get a deal in this house. There's nothing good about it, right? Like that. that's what I'm thinking as a buyer. There's nothing good about this house. They couldn't even write three lines. So if a property is not in the best of shape, that's okay. We can talk about the potential of it. We can talk about the proximity that it has to maybe certain areas, the highway, the hospitals, schooling. So there are different things that we can focus on as far as location, or maybe it's the size of the yard, or maybe it's the poten potential of the property. So definitely use not just the condition of the house, but the area and the surroundings to generate at least three lines of information. Can you guys commit to doing three lines, please? I don't wanna see any Cameron agents just doing two word sentences, please. Um, and using adjectives. So using adjectives, I'm gonna give you guys a quick example of a listing uh, in just a minute, but you basically want to use adjectives that are going to trigger someone's emotion, right? Because emotion is what makes people act. And that's what we really want to do when we have a listing. We want to we want to trigger those emotions from people when they're reading the listing. So the only way to trigger emotions is using words that are going to be powerful. So if you feel like, you know what, Chris, I don't have a great vocabulary of adjectives. That's okay. There's actually something on Google called uh, synonyms and you could just look them up. So if you have a word and you're like, oh, man, I, I use great all the time, just type great in, check out some synonyms and insert those into your description. Okay. Uh, capitalization can be a highlighter. So Glenn, good morning. Carrie, good morning. So I do not recommend 
capitalizing everything in a description. For one, if you capitalize everything, then it's harder to read. And if you highlight everything, then nothing's highlighted. So use some of those capitalizations in areas where you want things to stick out. So maybe you're in an area that has little to no parking, but your property has two off-street parking spots. You might want to capitalize two off-street parking spots if that's in the middle of your description. That way it just kind of pops out from the surrounding uncapitalized words. So use capitalization to be a highlighter, but don't overcapitalize. So that's something to keep in mind as a hint. Use three sentences at least. We talked about using adjectives. And I'm going to give you guys a little sample here. Uh, let me just pull up and share my screen really quick. And I'm going to give you guys a little sample here. Uh, let me just pull up and share my screen really quick. All right. I believe we're sharing. Hopefully you can see this. All right. All right. So here's a listing from my man out in Amesbury. Tyler Hickey has his property under agreement. It's contingent. But I just wanted to show this for you guys really quick, just to kind of give you an idea on um, this property, $1.2 million. The, the remarks, the description you can see right away is full. And that to me looks like this property has something to be said about it. So one of the things you want to mention is if a property, you, you want to be able to highlight what's it, what needs to be highlighted. In this property right away, the first word is waterfront. And you see a picture that really reflects that. So right away, if I'm looking at this property, and if I'm a buyer specifically looking for waterfront property, boom, it's, cap, it's capturing my interest right out of the gate because I don't have to go searching. I'm not seeing a picture of a kitchen as a profile picture. I'm not seeing a, a, a picture of a bedroom or you're like, oh, this is a very nice living room. Why would you put that picture as a water, if it's a waterfront property? You're totally, you, you're, you're minimizing what this property is offering. So I love what Tyler did here and shout outs to you, Tyler, on making sure that he's capturing what this property is and who it's for, all right? so realize what the property is and who it's for and make sure that you're capturing that in your listing. So right out of the gate, you're seeing that he has a nice drone shot of the property from afar with the um, with the nice uh, 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 waterfront right in front of the property and the dock and the waterfront with dock being the first words here is going to be captivating to those interested. Enjoy breathtaking views of Merrimack River. Breathtaking views. It wasn't just enjoy views of Merrimack River. He added some additional language in there that's going to, it's, it's going to stimulate the emotions, right? Breathtaking views of Merrimack River. And uh, three levels of this early 2000s renovated home. Sunlight is majestic. And the four seasons are magical so majestic magical you can see that there's adjectives and words being used that are going to inspire people to really want to see this property so i love the fullness of the uh of the description and the remarks i love the adjectives being used i love that he took waterfront and put that right at the first word of the description and and also here's a trick too to put the open houses in the actual remarks. So this is something that I recommend all agents do. Um, you cannot put your phone number in the remarks, such as call me for this. MLS doesn't allow to, to do that. I wish they would. Um, however, you can put open house and the dates that you have the open houses. That way, if it's being transferred and it's being hijacked to another website, then at least that open house is going to be on there without a doubt because it's part of the remarks so uh, additionally you want to put it in showing instructions and you and you want to add an open house to the listing however you want to put it in the remarks as well that way it's kind of tattooed on the listing so yeah i mean the only the only thoughts i have on this is you know he has uh walkout glass doors multi-level uh, deck guest bedroom, awesome stuff in here, maybe using some capitalization within the remarks to have some things stand out. Um, there's just a bunch of good stuff in here. So 
I could see it being hard to do that, but um, that would probably be my only feedback on it. Other than that, wonderful listing. Uh, you see the picture here, the remarks, and utilizing the disclosure, the special showing instructions, <clears throat> firm remarks. A lot of people put their offer deadline in there. Um, don't be afraid to disclose stuff. You know, you can see here, he has a bunch of disclose, uh, disclosures here, photo and video tour from 24 months ago. Doesn't matter as long as it's dis disclosed, right? A lot of times you can list property in the winter time. It's nice to have a backyard that you can see rather than a backyard that's full of snow. So don't be afraid to take pictures when the house is at its best state. That way, if you show them the property in the winter, um, and the winter, by the way, is only six months of the year here. So you may want to take some, some better quality, uh, shots when it's spring, fall, um, and, and gear up for when it's ready to be listed. Uh, you can see that the pictures here were obviously professionally taken. You have a nice drone shot. You have a nice picture of the dock here. And by the way, again, making sure that your top pictures because you, you can re, you want to arrange your pictures in your listing in the order that you want you to see for your buyers to see them so when you're populating pictures don't just populate pictures and however they fall that's how you're going to post them rearrange them to the order that you want them to be seen by the buyer with your profile picture being the money shot what is going to be the money shot of your listing you have to look through and find a money shot. So to me, that's the money shot. It's a waterfront property. His second one arguably could have been a money shot too. He's got a nice dock picture there, but I do like the aerial picture as the money shot. So he's got two really good shots front and center. The first two pictures of the property that are going to really speak to what this property offers. Um, and then he has a nice... Uh, picture here, excuse me, of these um, doors, these French doors that open up to a deck. That's pretty cool. Another aerial shot. So you can see the surroundings. You can see some boat slips there. This is going to be, this is going to trigger exactly what these people are looking for, meaning the buyers are looking at this. You have, um, again, some nice shots here. Uh, they're bright. They're all consistent, by the way, too. When you look at the quality of the shots, they're all going to be similar in terms of the lighting. They're going to be similar in terms of the filters. So you want to have well-lit photos. We'll talk about photos in a little bit. We'll get more into that. But they're all consistent. You can see they're all consistent. It doesn't look like one was shot with a, uh, a phone and one was shot with a point and shoot. One was shot with a, you know, whatever. They were. They're all pretty consistent. So nice job, Tyler. Uh, big shout outs to you on that listing. Congratulations on getting it under agreement. Um, all right, let me see here. Uh, let me get back to my slides so I can see where we are. Any questions on any of that stuff on the description? Uh, you guys got a sample of one right there. So hopefully that helps. Look at those descriptions from listings that you feel were good listings. Don't be afraid to look at those descriptions. That way you can mimic some of the same framework that was done on these listings. Now, you don't want to go stealing other people's lines word for word. You can get an idea on how it's structured and adopt a similar uh, pattern on your listings when you are listing yours. So. Definitely um, take a look at other people's listings and see what you like, see what you don't like. All right, so pictures. Professional photography is recommended 98% of the time, unless you have a passion for photography and you have a skill set for photography, it's probably best that you hire a photographer to do it. The best part about photography when it comes down to real estate is not terribly expensive. Like you can get pictures done on your property for just a couple hundred bucks. And again, when you get that done and you show your future listing appointments, how your photography looks and letting them know that you use professional photography, professional photography, when you say that, the perception is that it must be expensive. No one has to know it's only a, a couple hundred dollars. 
using professional photography can sound so much more grand than it actually is. And it's going to make you look like you're actually offering some value to the people that you're servicing. So professional photography, friends who have a fancy camera may not count, just to let you know. Some people, oh, my friend has a camera. They're a photographer. Since when? Yesterday? They're a photographer since yesterday? Well, again, do you want to give them a shot? Maybe, eventually. However, I would suggest looking at people's pictures because you want your pictures to represent what your thoughts are. If someone comes out just because they have a fancy camera, they may not know how to operate it. In fact, I always feel it's not always so much about the equipment. The equipment matters. However, it's more on how you use the equipment. That's always going to be the key. I've I've videoed and, and, and shot some things and some pretty outdated equipment, and it's come out good because I'm able to put some adjustments in some other areas. But professional photography, friends, let them build their resume. If they want to come out and do it for free, and you're doing something in addition, addition, then so be it. Um, highlight the home strengths. We saw that with the listing that we use as an example. And sometimes it may not be that it's waterfront, obviously. There's only so many of those. Sometimes it may be the backyard. The backyard may have been built out like a paradise. Maybe it's the living room. Maybe it's the kitchen. What is going to show the best for the money shot? You have to be thinking about this when you're walking through the home. Filtering pics, uh, if you have a professional photographer, they're doing that. They're, they're filtering some pics. They're adjusting the lighting, the contrast. They're making sure that those pics have a consistency throughout them. We do not want to catfish buyers. So we don't want to overfilter our pics like, no offense, a lot of people do on IG and, and all these uh, apps and they're, they're, they're filtering it. And next thing you know, you see it in person. You're like, what the heck is this? This person looks nothing like what they did in real life. The same could be said with the listing. This listing looks nothing like I thought it would. So we don't want to overly stretch to where the property is so pristine online where every single buyer that comes in is not going to like it because it's not what they thought it was. We almost want to have that spot where we can promote and push the property where the pictures are great quality, the description is solid, and we're still not overly stretching it to where when people come in, they're pleasantly surprised or it's even better than they thought. So try to find that balance. I know it can easily, it's easier said than done. There is a balance where you can find that spot where your listing is not going to be stretched so far where someone's going to be catfished. So if you're making notes, don't catfish a listing. If you want to catfish someone online on dating sites, feel free to do that. Don't catfish your listing or don't catfish buyers. Drone shots, I think, are really cool to be um, to be utilized. You saw it with the sample listing that we had. Drone shot was perfect for that. How else could you capture where that property was, you know, as good as you could from an aerial shot? So there's also aerial shots that really highlight the backyard or the land the property sits on, or it gets a cool shot of a pool if it's an in-ground pool or a basketball court, or maybe the proximity to different locations in the area if it's uh, in a more dense area. So drone shots, most photographers can offer this. As most photographers can offer floor plans, which can be a nice addition to a property to attach as an image where someone, a buyer can look at it and they can see the floor plans just from seeing um, a, a picture and they can see how the living space is, is actually uh, constructed. Ademola, what's happening? I see you watching my friend. Anyone who has questions online, make sure to drop them in the comment section. I'll do my best to pay attention to you guys uh, for those joining us online. All right. Moving on to signage, 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 signage. Do not overlook this detail because having garbage looking signage contributes to having a trash listing. So driving by an awesome property and then seeing a raggedy sign in the yard, 
doesn't make sense to me. We work so hard as listing agents. When we get a listing, you should be putting everything you can into how this listing is presented to the public. And one of the easiest ways to do this is the sign that you put in the ground. So I'm going to recommend that everybody use a sign post in a panel. Using a sign post in a panel looks the best, in my opinion, on most properties. Now, there are certain situations that you can't use a sign panel because, or a sign post because there may not be any yard or whatever. You have to make do or you have to make do. Again, a sign panel and a post look the best in my opinion. That's gonna be the post that comes out of the ground with the arm and the panel that hangs off of the post, okay? That's gonna most look the most presentable and um, it's actually gonna show your sign the most. It's gonna be the most visible. Uh, when someone's driving by the property, this is gonna be a lot easier for them to see rather than a A-frame, yard sign that's put in the ground and you have to look down at it um those just don't show as well to me and the cost difference isn't that much so if you're going to invest in signs in my opinion you might as well just invest in the signs that look the best so i i i for this i don't necessarily care about uh what other people's thoughts are on this i'm convinced that sign posts and panels are the best so um just use those if you can if all you have is the other ones, then those posts you can purchase for eighty to one hundred dollars. They're PVC. They break apart in a couple pieces, and and then you can purchase a panel uh, for thirty five bucks. So you're looking at less than one hundred and fifty dollars for a sign setup, and obviously you can take that and from listing to listing. So you don't really need to have too many of them. You can really have a few of them, a handful of them, two or three, and that can basically suffice if you have even a number of listings because you'd always rotate them out once a property is sold you take it go to the next property so if you have two or three sign setups you're probably going to be good if you are a listing based agent um so again a couple hundred bucks invest it in your signs make them look good and make sure your name is visible on the signs I would I, I don't I don't recommend having signs where it's a generic sign. We have sign panels here at the office and we can have you borrow them or buy them, but they're generic signs. They're not going to have your phone number on them. They're not going to have your name on them. Why wouldn't you want to have your name blasted right there in front of a property with your phone number? Boom, right there. That's the way to go. So I would have that customized to you. If you are using a picture on a sign, we talked about catfishing listings. If you I, I would go to sign, I would go to property sometimes. And it's like I'm waiting for the listing agent. And the listing agent's like, that's me. I'm here. I'm like, oh man, I didn't notice. Like the, the sign looked totally different. Sorry. That would I would say that inside. But the picture, if you're using a picture, just just keep in mind those do get outdated you know like if i i don't use pictures because of that reason if i used a picture i probably would have changed my sign like five times sign with me with hair sign with me without hair sign with me you know this that's so just keep it keep that in mind if you're using a picture which i know agents love to show their face on things just make sure that it stays current and you're changing that out every few years or if you want to brand your name then that will obviously have a lot more longevity so you can get your signs designed there are a couple sign design companies out there um, you can use fiverr to design something if you want it more custom if you want a plug and play type situation we have vendors like build a sign that you can basically just log into and populate your information or like i said you can get something designed through fiverr and then have a sign company print it off for you um, so a couple of options there use a sign install company if you can't do it correctly so another highlighter you know and something that is tough to see is driving by a listing and seeing someone sign and the sign is like halfway leaned over or bent over and i see that all the time so just make sure that your signs installed correctly 
Um, they're pretty easy to install. I mean, if I if I'm installing a sign, it literally takes me like three minutes to install a sign. Um, however, if you feel like you don't want to do that or you don't know, you don't want to have you don't have any interest in doing it, then there are sign install companies that can do it for you for a relatively short amount of money. I mean, we're talking about a hundred bucks for them to put it up and take it down. So um if you if you want someone to do that for you, there are companies that do it for you, and sometimes even less than that. So if you can't do it correctly, then hire a sign install company to do that for you guys. So if you can't do it correctly, then so we talked about information, description. Uh, I'm sorry, we talked about description pictures, signage, uh, and I wanted to talk about the gathering of information on a listing. So one of the most important things you can do is gather as much information. That way you can populate your listing and populate your listing with the information that you have. So what I recommend is getting a feature sheet and going over that with the owner and sitting down with them as part of your listing appointment. And now that we have the listing signed up, I'm excited to get going on the marketing. I have a sheet here that helps me market your property. I'm just going to talk through some of the features here and going through that and having them help you fill that out. So what are the most exciting things about this home to you? What made you buy this property? What's your favorite room in the house? What's your favorite update that you made to the house? Put together a list of questions that can help you get some of those features that you can transfer to the description, the remarks of the property. In this way, you're not going to be totally off when you send something to the seller or the seller sees their listing. One thing a seller is going to do for sure is they're going to read that description. They're going to read that remarks. In fact, they may be the first to read your remarks on a property that you're listing because it's their house. So you want them to be somewhat included in what's being presented in there. So letting them know that you're going to be using this for the description of the property and if there's anything specifically that they want mentioned in that description that way you can transfer it over some agents even send that description or the remarks to the seller before they go live with it here's what i have come up with for the description of your property we're going live tomorrow morning any thoughts on the description or anything you want me to add to it because they're going to you don't want them to say something after the fact, right? So you might as well provide them that information so they can have something to say. So the information gathering, the description, the pictures, the signage, all those things are gonna to contribute to you guys having a quality listing. And if you're having a listing on the market and you've never listed something before, look at listings that you feel are listings that were a good representation of the property. Go back to what my example was today. Look at some other examples online on MLS and see what good listings look like. See what not so good listings look like and find what's going to work the best for you guys. So hopefully this helped you guys kind of put together what you would do on your future listings or some things that you can kind of change if you've already had some listings that you posted recently. Don't be afraid to go back and edit some things, you know, without having to do the whole thing over. You can definitely touch up some things, but. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you comment. If there's anything that I missed, I'd love to hear from you. If there's something that you do that helps your listing stand apart, definitely drop it in the comment section. Check out some of my other videos and hopefully uh, you guys will like, comment, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. Hey.